Hello everyone and you are all very welcome to our Ask Ally Beginners Self-Publishing Podcast with me, Orna Ross, and with Mr. Stone and Press, Jim Lewis. Hi, Jim. Hi, I'm here. Hi. He's here. He's very here. I'm here in my new sound room, well, which is half built, and I look, we were just saying that I look like somebody who's in a straight jacket and been locked away. <laughs> and Tim was saying, well, that fits because, you know, novelists and poets are a bit mad anyway. So thank it, you, Tim. <laughs> it's good of the doctors to let you out for half an hour. <laughs> to, yeah, do yeah. <laughs> to do the Ask Ally podcast, yeah. <laughs> So our topic today is one that is of great interest to anybody who has ever written anything, I think, um, which is when you get to that point of self-editing. So what we're going to be doing, Tim and I, over the next seven or eight uh, months is we're going to be working uh, through the seven processes of publishing. So editorial design production, distribution, marketing, promotion, rights, and running an author business. And we're going to take them in the order that you generally meet them as a self-publisher. But the phase that comes before that, we're not going to do writing because we have a separate salon. That's next week, for those of you who are around next Tuesday, uh, with Dan Blank, we look at writing specifically. But between writing and the, the full on publishing bit, there comes this little phase or which can be a very big, very long, very drawn out phase called self editing. So we're going to look at that tonight. Uh, Tim has edited in lots of different genre and uh, so we'll be able to bring that sort of perspective. I've done poems as well as fiction and nonfiction as well. So I'm able to bring that perspective and also some of the tips and things that I've heard over the years from the Ally editor um it should also be useful and we have a couple of recommendations for you but i want to start by asking tim because we, we were talking before we came on and he said that self-editing time travel books and self-editing fantasy are two completely different things and i'm really fascinated by this uh why okay well we jump straight into that um i mean the first three novellas i wrote uh, which i also said was uh, i'm reissuing them as a paperback this week they were all time travel books um, and the thing about time travel is it's very complicated in terms of you've got to make sure that the differences you've got in one thread are, are, are represented in the other threads. And there's a lot to do with time and structure of the book that you don't appreciate. I mean, it's all right if you're writing like a time travel book where you jump back to one period and then that's it. It's like a historical time travel book. But mine, uh, <laughs> my my first time shop book has about 20 or 25 different time travel jumps in it where they're all alternative different realities. And wow. you have to be very careful about like, not just the what the time period is and what what was so i had to like google whether the iphone had been created at like a particular time period but also like uh the logic of the alternative thing I had to be very careful in instructing working or going through everything and working that out now the third three books no yeah the three books i wrote fantasy books after at the time travel series like one a year the magpies and magic series that has very different issues in terms of self-editing than the time travel ones. It's not so much about the timeline. It's about, obviously, most fantasy book names are not normal names. So it's not going to be like Nigel or something. It's going to be like Asendorf or something. So at one point, it's making sure all the names are, are consistent and correct. And also, not they're, they're all slightly different. But also, you are creating a different universe in fantasy. Now, to some extent, you could have there is overlap with science fiction. If you wrote pure science fiction, you've got to make sure that. So, for example, in my Magpie's Magic book, the whole preface of the book was that there was a magpie from our world that went to this other world where everybody else is tiny. So he's like a, the size of a horse uh, in this other universe. But the number of times I had to go through the editing process and say actually no he's too big in that world and you forget about these things these rules you create in the different alternative universe in a fantasy world and that is very that's something that you really need to bear in mind in fantasy it's all about making sure your world is well view is consistent it's fantasy but it can't be inconsistent you can't have suddenly silver kills dragons and then in the next scene 
they're throwing silver stuff at the dragon and it's 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 still alive it's totally ignores it it's like it has to be consistent within itself and that is a real problem with self-editing uh, well it's not it's not a problem with self-editing it's a problem with writing fantasy but most of that kind of thing is stuff that you look into in the editing process you don't look at necessarily you could do when you're writing it uh and i think that's where plans help a lot because plans can be somewhere you can pick up these major inconsistencies in your world um i mean in general in writing fiction you don't want to kill somebody and then have them suddenly reappear later on because you've forgotten you killed them off uh, that has happened in a lot of books i've seen with people do um so there are all sorts of general rules but there are specific issues with particular kinds of genres um so i don't know if you come back to you and talking about poetry uh i mean what is the biggest like over and above proof reading and like, other things which obviously you probably would pay other people to do what are the biggest self-editing challenges for poetry yeah poetry is completely different and i i found that what you were just talking about there really interesting and i think it's an interesting way to to look at self-editing first of all we look at it specifically around different genre different challenges and then come to what's common kind of to everything um in a little few minutes so yeah poetry uh, for me and poets work in very different ways as indeed do novelists and, and non-fiction writers but for me poetry is almost like just a process of self-editing so it, uh, it goes on and on and on. It's very small, very concentrated. It's about finding the exact right word that clicks in terms not just of sense, but also of sound. So you've got a rhythm and you've got maybe rhyme, half rhyme or suggested rhyme and you've got the meaning. And it's almost like a jigsaw puzzle putting it together. And so it's, it's very, very much at the, at the level of words and language, shape of the words on the page you know, uh, where it breaks up into stanzas, length of line. So, you know, I often find myself at the end of a poem actually making the lines longer or shorter than they started out, that kind of thing. Very occasionally you get a poem because it is short form. You get a poem complete and you don't have to touch it. Oh, yeah. it's absolute <laughs> bliss. But I mean, that's one in about every 150, you know. But it's really great when that happens. You just wake up some morning, you're in the shower, you're on, on your run or your walk or whatever, and then suddenly it just comes whole. And I always think that happens after I've been wrestling with a longer, more challenging one for a while. But the whole thing about self-editing, I think, and one of the most important things is that you've got to come to it cold. So it's important not to start editing before you're finished writing. I mean, you yeah. mentioned there that you could do these things while you're writing, but I think you'd agree that if you start that process of editing while you're writing, you end up not, not doing either of them well. It's almost like you have to give it a complete run at it with the creative imaginative mind where anything goes and you allow yourself to put down anything knowing you will fix it later. Then you put it away and then you take it out and leave as long as you can between those two things um because the colder you are the more removed you are from the words when you come to edit them the better and the longer the work i think the longer you should put it away for so i would usually have and, and i'm not talking about poetry here at all i'm talking about long form book stuff and um, i would usually have two projects on the go one in the writing and one in the editing. I would also say, if only I followed my own advice, <laughs> life would be a lot easier because I haven't always done that. But when I do it that way, I find it's 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 definitely the way to do it. Do you think? Uh, yes. I mean, I've tended to always start editing fairly soon after I've, uh, but then it takes me so long to usually write anything. <laughs> it's like, uh, well, I say that, it takes me ages to plan books I actually write them really quickly. It would just take me like a year to do the plan of the book and then I'll write it in a month. Uh, okay. And then it's kind of like, so it, it's kind of, uh, but for you, like, I mean, let's say, I don't know, what would you say is average length of book that you've written and how long do you leave between you finish the writing to feel cold enough to start self-editing it? How, how long a period for that well, again book? Yeah, again, uh, you know, my advice is brilliant here and I have always stuck to it. But I remember reading years ago, uh, William Trevor, an Irish writer, saying his method was he finishes 
the draft. He puts that in the drawer and in the other drawer he's taking out the, the draft he finished before he started that one. So he's always on this kind of relay thing. And I think that's probably ideal. Um, so once you've written another book, you can actually go back to your previous one with that. You need that objective eye. And, that's, and I think, you know, there's nothing better for that than having given yourself a, another project in the meantime. It's it's not it's challenging, you know. We get in our own way with these things a lot of the time, and I this is a beginner's salon, so I'm conscious as we're talking that we're talking about lots and lots of books, and that a lot of you who are listening are probably on your first book and thinking, oh my god, you know, I'm never going to finish this, and the idea of then having to go and write another one before I could get around to editing this before I can put it out there is just not something I'm going to do, and I can completely understand that. I would like to say that all of these processes get quicker the more you do them so your first book is your slowest book it took me years to write my first book and it it was a very long book and you know i didn't do what i just advised people to do and i got all the phases of the process all mixed up in each other and that made it take much longer than it needed to but you're learning by doing and really there's no way to do that except make lots of mistakes and as long as you're doing and doing something and showing up you shouldn't worry too much about going wrong or um you know not doing things properly but i think the ideal is yeah just let it let it rip while you're writing put it away write another one take it out the other one is cooling off while you're editing this one and and just keep going like that through a cycle and that's the ideal writer's life i'd say yeah i mean um, I mean, one thing about self-editing is that it's it's about catching the obvious errors. I mean, one thing I like to do after I've done the first couple of passes self-editing is actually get software to basically read out the book to me uh, so I can hear how it sounds. Uh, because I find that for, I mean, it's similar to what you were saying about the poetry side of things. And I'm guessing poetry, you would be basically reading out stuff to make sure it sounds right. But even in fiction or non-fiction, sometimes you just want it to... You, you, if you get somebody, something to read it to you, or you read it yourself, that can help with catching a lot of repeating words and tonal errors and other things. Uh, but obviously before that, you don't really want to be doing that uh, straight away. No, not straight away, but I think it's a brilliant tip. Could you um, name some of the possible softwares that people can use to do that? I know there's a, a Kindle reader has a has a voice, doesn't it? Yeah, well, I use I, I use one called uh, Natural Reader on my PC. Um, I did pay for a licensed version, but it never seems to work properly. But the free version <laughs> seems to work fine. It sounds robotic, but at least it, uh, it you paste in into it and it read it. Uh, I think there are various other software you can get that can do speech to text now. There's certainly, I think on Apple, there's one built in. So you just use that. Yeah. So it's, te it's text to speech. And, yeah. and that it's robotic is actually very good because when you hear the words being read out, you know, when we read our own stuff, we put our own inflection on it and we already know what we meant, but the robot doesn't. And so when the robot reads it, you can actually hear things. You can hear repetition of sounds that you mightn't be aware of within the words but also you can hear where you didn't quite make sense and and you thought you did it's it's really good from that point of view but again as tim says not to set that off too soon and we will have any uh, recommendations that we make will be in the show notes and the transcript um for the podcast which goes out on the Ally Self Publishing Advice blog on Saturday next. So you can get all the details and everything there. And after this show, we're going to be on Twitter doing a Twitter chat. So if you have any questions about anything that we're talking about, or indeed anything to do with the topic of self editing, hop on over to Twitter if you have a Twitter account at 7.30 London time, um, in other words, in about a quarter of an hour's time, and we'll be there for about half an hour to answer any questions you might have about self-editing or just to continue the chat. So, um, yeah, so how long would you typically spend editing? Do you have a rule? Do you kind of set yourself so many pages a day? How do you handle it? Um, 
I usually go by chapters. Um, now I write short chapters usually. I've always written short chapters. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, five or six chapters of sort of about five. Uh, about, so it's about five thousand words or so. I, I try and do a day. Sometimes it's like depends like what you've got on. Uh, editing is boring to me, um, but I know it's important. Uh, some people find editing the most fun part of the process. It's very peculiar. Uh, but no, I, actually... <laughs> <laughs> I love editing. I actually yeah. love that part. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean that's the thing. You start, but you do need to get it done because uh, it's kind of it's a bottleneck in the writing process. It's um, very important, and it's never finished. You you stop at a point where you feel okay, it's good enough. I think yeah. that's important to say. Trying to make it perfect is is um, sort of a heading for a problem and it can be good to organize yourself editing in terms of passes through so that you're yeah. not trying to catch the same thing all the time so for example in a novel you might do one pass through for a character um just improving yeah. and deepening the characters and the character relationships finding any inconsistencies and you only look at character you if you see things about setting or anything else you'd like to change you just kind of draw attention to it by highlighting it or whatever but you don't stop on the character thing so then the next um pass through could be for plot and um, plotting consistency or whatever it's up to you what, what you would actually be passing through for and what's most important for you to do but trying to do everything all at once and and edit just at the level of a particular chapter and then the next chapter trying to get everything right in each one it's important when you're self-editing whether it's fiction or non-fiction that you get a sense of the book as a whole so the first thing you do is you read the whole thing through from start to yeah. finish um even though you may you know instantly see loads wrong in in chapter one you just keep on going and read with a notebook beside you and make sure to note not just things that you would like to change but also it's really important i think to know things that you like that you feel are working really well um, and that you want to emulate in in other parts of the book so when you do something that that's kind of good um i used to i don't anymore because i kind of do it spontaneously now but when i was starting i used to have two highlighter pens um, sort of green for go for stuff that was actually okay and passed to the radar and then orange or a different color for things that I wanted to fix up in that first initial read. Do you have any sort of habits like that? Um, well, I always start with looking at the, the bigger picture first. So, because I have rewritten large chunks of some of my novels in the editing stage because like something just doesn't work. Or it's a bit like, well, the story kind of like, mm. um, and in sometimes like, like those can be things that will take me a couple of days to work out a solution that is better than whatever rubbish I wrote in the first place. Because I think it's important that you, when you're self-editing, you don't want to be correcting like typos and things straight away because you might delete that entire section. Uh, or you might add, or, or you might change somebody's name or something all the way through the book. So you want to, as you say, you want to be concentrating on the big things that are wrong at the beginning. Um, I mean, it, it sounds a bit like, uh, is it that book this, called The Story Grid, where they do like, they do all these very structured passes where they're doing self-editing. Um, something like, I think anything to do with writing, and I'm terrible at this, uh, but the more you can plan and the more you can have structure in your editing and planning process, I think the better your books will be for most people. I mean, it, it, some people are naturally like they're kind of, they can just write it straight start to finish. And I think with something like poetry, it's not as important to do planning as it is for say complicated time travel or science fiction, military sci-fi or something like that, or, or something where people who are reading it are going to worry that you've, you've used the wrong caliber of gun in the show because they know about like how guns work. Um, but I think the more organized you can in terms of the preparation before you start writing and the preparation in the editing side, the better the book will be before it get, even gets to an editor. Um, because you're, if you're paying an editor, you don't want to be paying them to do things that you could have done. Uh, so that's kind of something that's, that makes a big difference. Definitely. And you 
can, there are things that an editor can't do for you and in that deepening self-editing stage you really do need to go into that and you're so right about the planning and, and the process thing I mean, the longer i am in this game the more i realize how important planning and process are and i know there are people as you say they write into the dark but uh, i still think and this is just my opinion i know you there are people who don't think this but the more i see of myself but also all the other people i work with including those who self-define as um pantsers the more i see that planning your process anyway even if you don't plan the content of the book and and i would recommend that you do but even if you don't do that planning a process around it otherwise week can turn into month can turn into year can turn into you know decades and i'm not exaggerating that does happen you've got to put a beginning and an end to the process and okay you might go a little bit past that deadline but if you if it's an open ended thing and you're going to be doing it all the time, you know, all the time until it's right in your own mind, then that is going to go on for far too long. That's what I did with my first book. OK, it, it took me a long time because also because I had lots of excuses, a family, I was doing a um, teaching and blah, 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 job and all the rest of it. But really and truly, mostly it was because I didn't plan enough and I didn't yeah. plan my own process, my own time. And I didn't have the, the sort of the end game in mind. When am I finished? How long am I going to give this? You know, how many passes am I going to do? When am I going to say it's good enough? I think it's very hard to have the confidence to do that at the beginning because it, letting it go is really hard because as soon as it's out there of course it can be judged as long as you're keeping it nice and close then uh, it can't be and so it's much safer place to be editing and you can work you can be very busy editing but not actually adding an awful lot to the book you know so it's a very delicate balance because definitely also books need self-editing for sure and a lot of books are put out without enough self-editing so i'm certainly not saying short cut this process it's really about looking inside and looking at your own where you're at and and knowing yourself am i somebody who's actually delaying here or am i somebody who is skipping and to do the opposite to, to what you're inclined to do is actually usually what you should be doing in the editing phase, I think, kind of ironically. Yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of it depends on the length of the book. Um, I mean, I've always advised people who are starting to self-publish to start with something shorter. Uh, I mean, I started with novellas and there's, I mean, a double the length of a book does not make it double the work um, because there's a certain amount of stuff that you can in a short story you can keep everything in your head um but once you start getting to like fifty thousand words or hundred thousand words it gets harder and harder to track everything um and so i think if you start with a shorter project you can learn the ropes more about uh certainly in a genre a new genre to you i think you could start with a shorter project and then you can learn like oh yeah i've got to keep track of the characters here and i've got to like that in this particular thing like if you were doing a whodunit or something like that then where everything is is very important because it could be like they uh it was colonel mustard in the uh in the kitchen with the uh rolling pin or whatever and you don't want then colonel mustard to never ever go in the kitchen or something like that i mean it's a stupid case but there are different kind of rules for each genre that you work out as you end up writing it. And if you start with something shorter, then you can learn the ropes before you go into a longer book about how to do self-editing side of things. Again, such good advice. Not what I did at the start. The longest book in the world, four generations, and uh, you know, really complicated movements forwards and backwards in time, and blah blah blah. But sometimes the book chooses us, doesn't it? Sometimes oh, we yeah. don't do the sensible uh, thing to do. So a lot of what you know we talk about as writers and a lot of the advice we give each other is the ideal scenario. Sometimes the book is just going to come and take you and insist that you write it, um, whether or not. And we're getting some really good comments here. And I'd like to read out, Ruby loves Colonel Mustard example. <laughs> Um, I'd like to read out here by Brian, Brian uh, Palmquist, I think. Um, hopefully I am pronouncing your name properly, Brian. 
Um, he's talking about a self-editing technique that works for him as he gets towards the end. And I think he means the end of the drafting phase. Yeah. So as I read the words, and that can mean inside my head, every time I trip over the word sentence, pause, I put a mark on the paper at that point, but I keep going. Then later I come back to review why I tripped and I identify some fixes, the awkward wording or flow issues then. So um, yeah, he, he likes the way that keeps the flow going. And I, I do think, you know, that's great advice. I really do. I do think keeping that flow going, the momentum going while you're drafting is the biggest favor you can do yourself and not to get caught um, in, yeah. in fiddling at the sentence level um, unless you've got a really good kind of quick method like that. For sorting it out so yeah and um, we've got about four minutes left Tim any last words of wisdom <laughs> uh, hopefully I'm not going to the firing squad and I've got four minutes uh, <laughs> that's I, good uh, for today I, before we go to I Twitter forgot to that's all I meant on my recording so Howard's going to kill me uh, who's Say a podcast again? editor? I forgot to press record on my recorder. Oh, yeah. uh, so, okay. Howard, our podcast editor is going to kill us. So, We're if we don't dead. have another, if, if there's just two <laughs> skeletons on the next show, it's because Howard, the, he, he doesn't like, he, he gets upset if we don't have a recording. And I'm, I missed about 10 minutes. So, okay. well, I've missed it entirely. I forgot again. Um, <laughs> Okay, well, before we go, we will see you, hopefully, guys, some of you over on Twitter, bring your questions yeah. over there. I would like to recommend for fiction writers, I don't know if you've got a non-fiction recommendation. I've got, I've got a recommendation for each. One is specifically a self... Um, a self-editing book it's by uh, Rennie Brown and a co-editor and it's called how to self-edit fiction or something like that a real sort of uh, does what it says on the tin and I found that extremely useful for me when I started off uh, writing fiction some time ago and the second one is for non-fiction and while it's not a specifically a self-editing book it has absolutely fantastic information in it about self-editing and everything else and that's uh, William Zinzer on writing well it's it's about non-fiction but fiction writers would benefit from reading it too so if you haven't gone there on those two titles I can definitely recommend them any recommendations your side uh no it's the same point <laughs> just get on and do it <laughs> yeah well I mean any any book um, I mean, uh, I've, I, I'm in the process of sort of thinking, planning a book called uh, Why Nobody Knows Anything and Why It Doesn't Really Matter. Uh, <laughs> uh, and the, the, one, of the, one of the general principles of that is that you, you don't ever think the one book or one thing is where you're going to get all the advice you need. A lot of the time you're just pulling one on. So meet, read as many books about writing on craft or your thing as you can. Uh, or listen to audio books or listen to podcasts and just pull out the things that strike, make a note of them, the things that really resonate for you. Uh, and then you just patch that together and, and work it rather than thinking you're going to have one book and then that's going to be the way to do it. I mean, there, there is the book, The Story Grid. I think it's called The Story Grid. Uh, I'll have to look it up where they've got a podcast where they talk about self uh, self planning and editing books. It's quite an interesting, it's by a guy who was an editor for years for one of the. Uh, yes, it's very good. It's it's um, structure. It's it's really yeah. good. So I mean that's I mean that's a good uh, kind of guide. But there were loads of other ones out there. I mean, Stephen King's got on writing, which I didn't find that useful, but that had a few little things in it were good. Two uh, K to Ten K by Rachel, somebody or other. <laughs> that's quite a good book. That's, on about, that's more about writing quickly, I think. Yeah. But yeah, it does have most books will embody the editing process. And finally, and most importantly, I think read the masters in your genre and you know when you get a book like that that's really your thing it really belongs to your genre your micro niche read it first as a reader and then immediately go yeah. back and read it as a writer and pick out highlight use your two highlighter pens if you like um highlight the stuff that you think is just amazing and then unpick it how did he or she get that effect what way did they actually put the words and sometimes even just typing up what somebody amazing has written is a really good way to learn things that you can't learn any other way. You kind of absorb it by osmosis. So that's our tips for self-editing, folks. If you have questions and you are on Twitter, do hop over. Tim has organized in the author chat. Is that our hashtag? 
Uh, that is our hashtag. Uh, I haven't organised it. I'm the, but on the other hand, uh, I will be over. I've got used. There's a program called TweetDeck, which is good, and you could just add a search for hashtag in the author chat, and then it will show. You should see a tweet where I mention the chat, uh, and hopefully anything else that we put beyond that. Um, so uh, it's now over to Twitter, I guess. Over to Twitter. Okay, and see you next month where we'll start talking about the real editing process, handing it over and how you find the right editor for you. Thanks for being here, everyone. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Bye.